Hello viewers, this is a Java presentation and in this presentation I will be talking about Java Eclipse. To be more specific, I will be giving an answer to a very crucial question that has been asked to any interview to any student that is, what is the role of this particular argument that we take in main function? So the answer to this question is, this particular argument will be used as command line argument. So how do you run a command line argument in Eclipse? This is what I am going to show over here. And in my upcoming videos, I will be also showing these things in NetBin even. And there are three different program I have written. I will be collectively, I will be keeping on adding more and more programs. And then I will be making these videos as and when I keep on upgrading myself. Okay, so the first thing that I will show you then how do you supply the argument for this program and then I will explain you these two lines. So first you right click at the name of the class and you go to the run as and then for you go to the run configuration. Once you do this, you need to be very sure about two things over here. You It shows you the main class. This is the first part of the statement shows you the package name and the second part of the statement shows you the class name. So you need to be very careful which class you are working on. Once this is done, you move to the next tab that is the argument. Initially, this particular segment will be blank and here you need to provide the input. Now, since we know that the argument which we are passing on over here is a string array, so it means it is going to handle multiple string and each of this string can have multiple character and even can have a single character. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me show you one after the other. The first input what I want to supply is suppose a single character a. Uh, the next input I want to supply is a word consisting of multiple characters, apple. The next input is going to be a word, but a series of word as a given sentence. For that, I need to enclose it within quotation. Apple is round. So this quotation will make Java clear that you are treating it as one single sentence. Again, if you want to get back to a word, you can do that as well. No issue about it. So in this way, with the help of quotation, you can distinguish between a string or a sentence. Okay. Now, once you have given all these strings and now you press the apply button, in that case, this particular input will be treated as an argument for your console. And once you press the run button, you will be able to see your console window where you will be able to see all the string that was given as an argument right been displayed over here. Now let me explain these two lines. The first argument says that this is an parameter which is going to be treated for receiving input from the user and that is going to be a string array. Now each of this statement, I don't know how many statements the user will be giving as input. So in that case, I need to run an enhance for loop where I need not have to mention the index as we do need to do in the, in the conventional for loops. So what the enhance for loop is going to do, it will declare a string variable that is A and it is taking the source ARGS where all the strings that has been initially stored. So the source is ARGS, the target is A. In each iteration, it will extract one row at a time. Do remember, a row can be a word, a row can be an alphabet, a row can even be a sentence. No issue about that individual iteration will extract one at a time that will be initialized in this particular variable and then it is going to be printed out. So in this way, each and every time this particular statement will keep on iterating and as it iterates, each sentences will be put in this particular variable until all the string come in the argument list comes to an end. And once it finally end up, the entire listing has been completed. This enhanced for loop helps us not to count that how many strings are there. That particular thing has been, has been get read off. But we can also do that as well. In my upcoming videos about on this command line, I will show you that how can you replace this enhanced for loop with some other concept as well. And how can you use this enhanced for loop for using different data types where the string input or string array input will be stored and then you can operate on them. So let's wait for the next video. Until then, have a nice time.